A little while ago, a YouTuber called Scott the Waz uploaded a video about game collecting. And it got me to really think about my own game collection and the experiences I've had with it. I've been collecting for about 5 years now, and over that time I've grown a pretty um, decent collection of video games. So today I just want to look back at my game collection and talk about some of the experiences I've had with collecting. To me, retro games are games that came out before or in the year 2000. I have two IKEA billies that I store all of my games in and the top shelves I reserve for all the retro games. I have all the usual stuff like N64, Super Nintendo and PS1, but I also got a small Master System collection. Also I have this Donkey Kong Country VHS tape that I randomly found for free one day in a thrift shop. It's a free VHS tape and it has this in the back so you know. There are also some plushies on the shelf that are basically just there to keep games from falling over. I usually do something like this when the shelf isn't full yet. So the right shelf below the retro game shelves is the one I reserve for the newer games. Most of them are disc based, but since the Switch has come out it includes cartridge based games too. I own a bunch of PS2 games, mostly because they are dirt cheap, but also because there are a ton of great games on the platform. You might notice there's a loose copy of Star Fox Adventures here that is separated from the GameCube games. I only do this because it's a platinum version and I feel it fits better with the platinum PS2 games instead of the normal GameCube games. The only reason I own a single Wii U game is because it was 5 bucks and it came with two amiibo. Most people wouldn't have bought Amiibo Festival under any other circumstance, I feel. The shelf left to that houses my handheld games. Stuff like DS, 3DS and Game Boy are displayed here. Since the European cases for DS games are thicker, I store them on top of the 3DS games. That way it saves me a bunch of space and I can pull out a 3DS game without a DS game falling down relatively easily. I only have one GBA game and I fear the day I get more because I dread trying to figure out how to display those since they don't stack on top of each other because of that stupid ridge they have. Next I have two shelves dedicated to controllers. I really don't like this setup and I have been in the market for cheap trays to put them in. And I have my eye on one so I'm expecting this layout to change soon. Amiibo! I believe I have around 40 amiibos. Amiibos were actually the first thing I started collecting just before I started collecting games. I wanted to get all the Zelda amiibos that were out at the time, which was around 2015 I believe. After I achieved that goal, I started collecting games and got familiar with all the other characters that had amiibos, which made me buy even more of them. My family went to Denmark on a vacation one year, and we came across a Toys R Us that had a wall of amiibos that were 2 to 5 bucks each. I think I got like 10 amiibos from that place, like Mega Man, Pit, Captain Falcon, Sheik, Donkey Kong, Peach and some other ones. I haven't really gotten a lot of additional amiibos lately, mostly because they've gone up in price. I think the last one I got was K. Rule, but only because it was like 10 bucks. One thing I really want to have at some point is all the games made by Rareware. Rare Replay doesn't count. Rare is probably my favorite video game company and most of the games they've made are very cheap. Especially the ones made in the Xbox slash Microsoft era. I also want to have all the LEGO games on GameCube, Xbox 360 and DS. The LEGO games are something I grew up with. Granted, I grew up with torrented PC versions of all these games, but still I want the console versions. And also the DS versions because I'm pretty nostalgic for them. Even though they are completely different from their console counterparts and are pretty much simplified versions. At some point I really want to get into the Game Boy library. That includes the original Game Boy, Color and Advance. There are so many games I'd love to try on these consoles but just haven't gotten to yet. I find it hard to spend a lot of money on game cartridges that are the size of a cracker, but still, someday I will. And I plan on getting these makeup display cases that I have seen some people use for displaying Game Boy games. Shoutouts to my life in gaming for introducing me to this idea. Someday I'm going to buy a Virtual Boy. The Virtual Boy fascinates me. To think that Nintendo made this clunky virtual reality console in the mid 90s is insane to me. I have tried it out at a video game museum, but I want to own it. And I want people who visit me and see my game collection to get a chance to experience the Virtual Boy. I also want to have a Sega CD one day. That's also something that really fascinates me, very early CD games. 
I like to see the evolution of games and see how we got to where we are now. Plus, I really want to play Snatcher, but seeing as that game is like a trillion dollars, I don't think I will anytime soon. At least not on original hardware. And now for something more achievable, I want to buy a Dreamcast. There are a lot of games I want to try on it, like Sonic Adventure, Shenmue, Space Channel 5, Jet Set Radio, Soul Calibur, and the list goes on. When I can find one for cheap, I'll definitely pick it up. I don't have a lot of rare or valuable games. I do have some boxed N64 and SNES games, and I guess things like Donkey Kong Country 3 and Kirby and the Crystal Shards are valuable in the box. I also have Hunting Grounds on PS2, which granted is the PAL version, so a lot of the value there is lost. But my most rare game is a game made by X-Rare employees. A physical release of ukulele on Switch with an autograph of everyone who worked on the game. Ever since I've won this in a contest, it has been my most prized game in my collection. As far for the game itself, I think it's okay. The first three worlds are really solid, but the galaxy level and that horrible casino level makes for a lukewarm finale. But still, I love this part of my game collection. I honestly think that's all I have to say about my collection. It's been fun going through it again and to share some stories. If you have any fun stories about your collection, let me know in the comments. I'll be reading through them whenever I have some free time. Also, I own six copies of Enter the Matrix. Oh.